Here's the full protocol to reverse the signs of skin aging based on the latest science, and this is not for vanity reasons. How our skin looks reflects our chances of living a long life. If we see a young person in the mirror, we're more likely to identify as young and practice those healthy life habits. And I've structured these strategies to follow a typical daily routine. So after a shower, the first of eight strategies is sunscreen, but it's critical to pick a sunscreen with certain ingredients that I'll list shortly because there are safety concerns with some sunscreens. To show you the power of sunscreen, here's a striking photo of a 92-year-old who used sunscreen on her face, but not her neck, for 40 years. In a landmark 2013 trial of 903 adults, the group who used sunscreen every day didn't show any signs of skin aging after four and a half years. And a follow-up study in 2016 showed that sunscreen not only stops aging, but it can even reverse the signs of skin aging. Sunscreen is critical, but there are legitimate safety concerns with some sunscreen ingredients. So broadly speaking, there are two main types of sunscreen, mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. While chemical sunscreens often give better protection against UV rays, they're easier to apply and are water resistant, many of the ingredients can be absorbed through the skin, and a study in 2020 showed that all six tested active ingredients were absorbed into the blood and were above the FDA's safety levels. The American Academy of Dermatology acknowledges this in their guidelines, where they state that the FDA wants more data on 12 ingredients before deciding if they're safe and effective. So my own personal decision is to avoid those 12 ingredients until that safety data has come through through. And these concerns have steered many people away completely from chemical sunscreens, which is not what I do by the way, but more on that later, and toward mineral sunscreen ingredients, which are not absorbed. But even though some sunscreens are marketed as mineral-based sunscreens, many of the labels are sneaky, and we'll get to that shortly as well by looking at a famous example of a mineral sunscreen. The only two mineral sunscreen ingredients that the FDA says are generally safe and effective are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. They work by blocking UV rays, while chemical sunscreen ingredients absorb the UV rays. Zinc oxide protects against both UVA and UVB, but titanium dioxide it protects mostly against UVB. So if we're going to select a mineral-based sunscreen, it's vital to have zinc oxide in it to offer that broad spectrum protection against both UVA and UVB. And no matter what sunscreen we choose, the American Academy of Dermatology says that we should reapply it every two hours or more, especially if we're swimming or sweating. That's because sunscreen can easily rub off and most people don't put enough on in the first place. ConsumerLab.com has a great list of mineral-based sunscreens that are broad spectrum and may be less problematic but even so, we do need to look at the labels ourselves. For example, Elta MD is a really popular choice as a mineral-based sunscreen. But if we look at the ingredient list, while it does contain zinc oxide, it also contains octanoxate, which is one of the chemical sunscreen ingredients that was flagged by that 2020 study as one of the ingredients that's absorbed through the skin and needs further study. Plus, octanoxate was banned in Hawaii due to its potential toxic effects on the marine ecosystems. So you can see that it's a bit of a minefield when trying to select a sunscreen that doesn't have any of those 12 FDA flagged ingredients, but still offers a broad UVA and UVB protection with SPF 50 and above. One option though that does meet my requirements is CeraVive 100% Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. It has both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, but none of the 12 flagged ingredients from the FDA. Now there are certainly other options out there, but I mentioned that one because it's relatively cheap and it meets the requirements that I was looking for, and I'm not affiliated with them in any way. But it can leave a white film on the skin which isn't ideal, and it's not the sunscreen that I use on my face. Here's why. While I made the decision to avoid the 12 FDA flagged ingredients, there are newer chemical sunscreen ingredients that offer the best of both worlds, and one of those ingredients is called bemetrezinol. It gives great UVA and UVB protection, but it's a large molecule and it doesn't get absorbed through the skin. It's been used in sunscreens for decades in Europe and Australasia, and it's marketed under the brand names Tinazorb S, but it's still awaiting FDA approval in the USA, even though it's been thoroughly tested and it's hoped that bimetrezinol will be FDA approved by the end of 2025. But since I'm lucky enough to live in New Zealand, I've got access to sunscreens that don't have those 12 FDA flagged ingredients and instead use newer chemical ingredients like bimetrezinol. So there are four famous Korean brands, and again I'm not affiliated with them in any way, that are great options and I'll put them on the screen now. The one I'm using at the moment is from Beauty of Joseon, but any of those four options would be a great choice. And if I didn't have 
have access to those sunscreens, I would use CeraVe 100% Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. Again, it does leave that white film when applying it, but personally, I'd prefer to use that rather than using a sunscreen with ingredients that need further study. For my arms, Beauty of Josen is too expensive, so I do use the CeraVe Mineral Sunscreen on my arms and back of my neck. But when I go swimming, mineral sunscreens, they tend to wash off too quickly. So instead of using the CeraVe Mineral Sunscreen, I use La Roche Posay XL Wet Skin SPF 50, which is a chemical sunscreen. It does have a couple of the FDA flagged ingredients, but on balance of risk versus benefit, I want to make sure that I'm getting protection against UV radiation while I'm swimming, so I opt for the lesser of two evils here, and I do use the La Roche Posay sunscreen. The second of eight strategies to reverse the signs of skin aging is to use a moisturizer with a couple of critical ingredients, and the first ingredients are ceramides. Ceramides are like the glue that hold our skin cells together, keeping our skin barrier healthy and strong. A 2019 study showed that ceramides can reduce skin wrinkles and improve skin texture. Another helpful ingredient is vitamin B3, also known as niacinamide. Niacinamide helps many processes in our body. It can improve fine lines, wrinkles, spots, redness, and elasticity. It also helps our skin make ceramides. And vitamin B3 in skin creams is recommended by the clinical guidelines. So I use CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion, and I apply it a few minutes after putting on my sunscreen. Then I have breakfast, and that brings me onto the third of eight strategies diet. So no one diet is going to be perfect for everyone. However, as per the clinical guidelines, a diet featuring plentiful fresh fruit and vegetables, herbs, nuts, beans, and whole grains with moderate amounts of seafood, dairy, chicken, and eggs, and occasional red meat is associated with good skin health. The diet fundamentals that I emphasize to my patients at the clinic are to have a diet high in lean protein and fiber with unsaturated fats like extra virgin olive oil, avocados, and minimize sugar, processed foods, and salt. And during my breakfast, I take a supplement, which is the fourth out of eight strategies. This supplement has strong evidence from human clinical trials that it reverses skin wrinkles by up to 18%, but it's shrouded in two controversies that need to be addressed. The supplement is hyaluronic acid, and it's found in every connective tissue and organ. Essentially, hyaluronic acid is the backbone of our connective tissue, holding everything together. The skin contains the largest quantity of hyaluronic acid in the body, with about 50% of the body's total hyaluronic acid present in the skin. But unfortunately, the quantity of hyaluronic acid in the skin, it gradually declines with age. For example, a 72-year-old person has only one quarter the amount of hyaluronic acid in their skin, compared to a 19-year-old person. So rebuilding hyaluronic acid is like adding new springs, restoring some of that original support. So it sounds great in theory, but there's two valid criticisms. And the first is can the body actually absorb hyaluronic acid supplements? This is a rabbit hole that's just had a new twist added to it after a 2023 paper was published. So are you ready for the rabbit hole? In the 2000s and early 2010s, animal experiments demonstrated that hyaluronic acid supplements can be absorbed and distributed to the skin, bones, and joint fluid, but a 2023 study has completely upended that conclusion. Hyaluronic acid, it's a really long molecule, and this part is important because it affects the type of hyaluronic acid supplements to use. Very long versions of hyaluronic acid are called high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and they display anti-inflammatory activities. Short versions of hyaluronic acid, on the other hand, are known as low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and they're associated with increasing inflammation. The previous studies that we looked at suggested that the body can absorb the long chains, or the high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and transport it to the skin. Indeed, that's why when I first started taking hyaluronic acid supplements, I opted for the more expensive, high molecular weight versions. But multiple studies started to come out, suggesting that no, high molecular weight hyaluronic acid is broken down into low molecular weight and then it's absorbed. But the 2023 study takes everything a step further. That study used the latest labeling technology to explore exactly how hyaluronic acid is or isn't absorbed. And here's what they found. Our gut bacteria completely breaks down hyaluronic acid and turns it into short oligosaccharides or sugars and short chain fatty acid metabolites, which are then absorbed. And it's those broken down pieces which have an effect on our skin rather than any direct effects from hyaluronic acid being absorbed. So buying expensive high molecular weight hyaluronic acid supplements is probably a waste of money. But given these absorption questions, what evidence do we have that hyaluronic acid supplements 
even though they're broken down, do indeed reduce skin wrinkles. Are these supplements worth it? And when examining the research, we care about the human, randomized, placebo-controlled trials. This is where one group will take the hyaluronic acid and another group will take the placebo or the dummy pill. Then we can compare whether there are any true effects to the skin despite these absorption challenges. Trials from 2001 all the way through to 2023 show that hyaluronic acid supplements do improve skin hydration and decrease wrinkles. For example, this 2021 randomized controlled trial of 40 people showed a significant improvement compared to a placebo, and that matches the results from a separate group in 2021, and these results were published in the European Journal of Dermatology, where wrinkles were measured by a cutometer, and they decreased by 18.8% compared to the placebo group. Importantly, there were no conflicts of interest in that trial. Finally, a larger 2023 trial of 129 people again demonstrated skin improvements from hyaluronic acid supplements. So overall, before we get onto the second controversy, we have multiple randomized clinical trials showing that even though hyaluronic acid supplements are first broken down into sugars and metabolites, there are improvements in skin wrinkles. But are these supplements safe? And that is the second of the two controversies. Some people may experience a bit of tummy upset, but the big safety concern that you'll often hear on social media is cancer. In single cell studies, when hyaluronic acid is given to cancer cells, it appears to accelerate cancer growth. However, when hyaluronic acid supplements are given to mice who already have cancer, there is no difference. So which form is best? Well, as explained, hyaluronic acid is broken down into sugars and metabolites. So when I designed microvitamin, I elected to use sodium hyaluronate 200 milligrams due to its enhanced stability and solubility and its smaller molecular size. I take microvitamin with my breakfast, but just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. The fifth of eight strategies is also a supplement that I take with my breakfast, specifically collagen peptides. We have evidence from multiple randomized clinical trials that collagen peptide supplements reduce skin wrinkles by around 8%, but just like hyaluronic acid, it's not without controversy. Collagen peptide supplements have taken the original long ropes of collagen and chopped them up into short chains of amino acids to help absorption, and amino acids make up protein. So critics of collagen peptides will say that there's no added benefit if you're consuming enough protein because the result is the same. Both strategies supply our body with amino acids. The thing is though, we have specific peptide transporters that allow collagen peptides to be directly absorbed and then transported to the skin. But what evidence do we have that collagen peptides do offer benefits over and above supplementing with protein? Well, we have a 2020 randomized controlled trial of burn patients. One group took protein and the other group took a matching amount of collagen peptides. The collagen peptide group experienced a significantly higher wound healing rate compared to the protein group, suggesting that collagen peptides do indeed have benefits beyond regular protein intake. The skin benefits were confirmed in a 2023 analysis that combined 23 separate randomized clinical trials together, where collagen peptides were shown to improve skin hydration and elasticity. So personally, I take 10 to 15 grams of collagen peptides every day. The next strategy is exercise. A really interesting paper in June 2023 looked at exercise and its effects on skin aging. It found that aerobic training improves skin elasticity, but it didn't improve dermal thickness, whereas resistance training did improve dermal thickness. So the overall point is that exercise has powerful effects on our skin, just like diet and sleep, and we want to prioritize both resistance exercise and aerobic exercise. Now, coming to the end of the day, strategies seven and eight are night creams. The first is retinoids. Retinoids strengthen the skin's protective barrier, reduce water loss, and stop enzymes that break down the skin support structure. There are several different types of retinoids, but the most recent ones have got some exciting advantages that I want to tell you about. But first, let's have a look at the oldest and most widely studied retinoid, tretinoin. Tretinoin was first used to treat acne in the 1960s, but patients and their doctors soon started to notice that it seemed to improve the appearance of skin in general, even helping with the signs of skin aging. So in the early 90s, it was approved by the FDA to treat fine lines and uneven coloration from skin damage, and plenty of research has shown its effectiveness. 
One massive analysis that looked at 180 individual studies on tretinoin reported that its use improved the signs of skin aging. But even though it works really well, some people are sensitive to tretinoin. They can experience skin irritation, redness and dryness, especially at first, and this drawback has led to the development of what's called third generation retinoids, which carry a distinct advantage. The reason is that they can act on our skin in a highly targeted way. Adapalene is the most commonly used third generation retinoid. But does that mean that we have to sacrifice on effectiveness? Well, a head to head trial in 2018 set out to answer that question to see if the newer generation retinoids, as in adapalene, worked as well as the older and proven tretinoin. The results? Well, the authors concluded that adapalene was just as good as tretinoin in reducing the signs of skin aging. Now, in a lot of areas around the world, you need a prescription to get tretinoin or adapalene. So I know some of you are wondering, what about other products on the market that also contain retinol that we can buy over the counter? Are they just as effective? Well, I can't speak to every product out there, but usually the answer is no. The reason has to do with the specific form of retinoid used, which isn't nearly as strong as the retinoids that we've discussed. One study investigated this class of products, called Cosmoceuticals, and they found the evidence supporting their use is weak. Overall, adapalene and tretinoin are great options. And it's important to note that their recommended use is just before bed because they can cause irritation and cause sensitivity to the sun. Plus, retinoids can degrade in sunlight, making them less effective. Also, retinoid use is not recommended during pregnancy. The eighth and final strategy is another night cream. It's the exfoliants, lactic acid and glycolic acid. So over time, these exfoliants can affect the deeper layers of the skin and reduce skin wrinkles. They help collagen and elastin to grow again, making fine lines less noticeable. These recommendations are based on studies like this one, where lactic acid increased skin firmness, thickness and improved smoothness and appearance of lines and wrinkles. Lactic acid and glycolic acid are called alpha hydroxy acids. There are also beta hydroxy acids like salicylic acid. Both alpha and beta hydroxy acids help to remove dead skin cells and promote skin renewal. So on Monday and Thursday nights, I apply both the alpha and beta hydroxy acids and leave them on overnight. Now for most people at my clinic, we recommend against using retinoid creams at the same time as these exfoliants because it can significantly inflame the skin. My skin is fine for whatever reason when I mix those creams together, so I use retinoids every night, but that is not standard practice. I encourage my patients to begin by using only one or the other on any particular night. And personally, I use Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 8% AHA Gel and 2% BHA Liquid, and I'm not affiliated in any way. Now it's time to go to bed and have a restful night's sleep, so make sure to check out this next video here that explains the latest science on how to optimize your sleep so that you can fall asleep when you want to and wake up feeling rested and energized.